Hello and welcome back to the Amateur Radio Technician License course. I imagine that many of you are excited about this section. It covers antennas and uh, feed lines. Uh, some of you may be scratching your head and wondering, what in the world? What's so special about coax cable and uh, you know, what's on the tower or roof or even up in a tree? Uh, well, the fact is that a good antenna system uh, even with a low quality transceiver is likely to outperform even the best transceiver with a poor antenna system. So it's your, to your advantage uh, to uh, ponder and understand uh, the concepts that are presented here. Are you ready to learn? Well, let's get started. This is the uh, Amateur Radio Technician Class uh, License Course, Lesson 9. My name is uh, Gary Stevens, KE2GS, and I'm your instructor. This section is on antennas and feed lines, and there are two exam questions in the two groups. In this first part, we're going to be talking about antennas, uh, vertical and horizontal uh, polarization, uh, the concept of gain, uh, common portable and mobile antennas, a relationship between uh, resonant length and frequency, and uh, the concept of uh, dipole antennas. If you were born in the 20th century, there's a possibility you've seen uh, this type of uh, directional antenna up on the roof of a house. Uh, however, if you're the generation that grew up on cable TV, it's less likely uh, you may have noticed such things. Uh, but uh, for the purpose of the exam, uh, antenna that concentrates signals in one direction is a beam antenna. A lot of times you'll notice that some antennas have a little coil right in the middle of the antenna or somewhere near the middle of the antenna. Um, they're usually dual band type antennas. Uh, for the exam, just know that uh, inserting an inductor in a uh, radiation portion of uh, the antenna will make it electrically longer uh, describes a type of antenna loading. One of the nice things about a dipole antenna is that they're easily to manufacture or to uh, make yourself uh, do-it-yourself project. Um, for the exam you need to know that a horizontally polarized antenna describes a simple dipole uh, oriented uh, parallel to the Earth's surface. Uh, once you get your license and you buy your first uh, handheld transceiver, you'll notice that uh, they're usually shipped with a really low, call, uh, low quality antenna called a rubber duck, um, sometimes a rubber ducky. Uh, one of the, uh, for the exam, you need to know that a disadvantage of a rubber duck antenna supplied with most handheld uh, radio transceivers when compared to a full-size quarter wave antenna is that it does not transmit or receive as effectively. Uh, sometimes when you're a do-it-yourselfer and you make an antenna, um, it doesn't quite resonate at the frequency that you want to. Um, however, you can change that. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that you can change a dipole antenna to make it uh, resonate at a higher frequency if you just shorten it. There are several styles of uh, directional antennas, uh, you know, quad, uh, quad meaning four uh, element or uh, four sides, um, a Yagi, uh, which is a, uh, like the directional antenna we showed before, and a dish type. For the exam, you just need to know that the directional ad antennas are quad, Yagi, and dish types. One thing you should know, not only just for the exam, but uh, in real life, is that uh, a disadvantage of using a, a handheld VHF transceiver with its uh, integ uh, integral antenna, or the antenna that comes with it, inside a vehicle, is that the signals might not propagate well due to the shielding effect of the vehicle. Exam question, we get to use our, our formula. Uh, that uh, wavelength is uh, equal to uh, 300 divided by the frequency in megahertz. Uh, so 
we learned by this that uh, 19 inches is the approximate uh, length of a quarter wave uh, vertical antenna for 146 megahertz. This question allows us to use the math again. Uh, this time uh, we find out that 112 inches is the approximate length of a half wave 6 meter dipole antenna. With uh, dipole antennas, they tend to radiate, uh, you know, kind of broadside to the antenna as illustrated in this uh, figure here. Uh, for the exam, know that the direction of a half wave uh, dipole antenna radiates the strongest signal, uh, its broadside to the antenna. Gain is uh, nothing more than an apparent uh, increase. Uh, it's not really a true increase. Uh, there's a lot of theories and debates and uh, people just go ballistic answering this question. Um, but for the exam, you just need to know that gain, the gain of an antenna is the increase in signal strength in a specified direction compared to a reference antenna, reference being theoretical, or a simple dipole. When it comes to antennas, a lot of times size matters. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that an advantage of using a properly mounted 5 8 wave length uh, antenna for VHF or UHF uh, mobile service is that it has a lower radiation angle and more gain than a quarter wave antenna. So that ends our discussion on uh, antennas. So now we're going to switch over to feed lines. And we're going to talk about the types, uh, attenuation versus uh, frequency, uh, selecting uh, the types of uh, feed line to use, uh, SWR concepts, antenna tuners or couplers, uh, RF connectors, uh, selecting them, and uh, of course weather protection. SWR or standing wave ratio is a measure of the impedance uh, matching uh, the loads of the input and the output. Uh, for the exam you need to know that to reduce signal loss it is important to have a low SWR when using coax cable feed line. Not all coax is created equal. Um, there's the 50 ohm type of uh, coax, which is used with uh, radios, and then 75 uh, ohm, which is typically used uh, for cable television. For the exam, you need to know that 50 ohms is the impedance most, uh, of most uh, coaxial cable used in amateur radio installations. With modern amateur radio, the most uh, uh, common and, uh, type of uh, feed line is coax cable. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that coaxial cable is the most common feed line selected for amateur radio systems because it is easy to use and requires few special installation considerations. Some modern uh, transceivers, particularly uh, HF, come with uh, t uh, antenna tuner built in, uh, but if it doesn't, fear not, uh, they sell some aftermarket ones that work just as well. For the exam, you need to know that the major function of an antenna tuner or antenna coupler is it matches the uh, antenna system's impedance to the transceiver's output impedance. In electronics, there's a phenomena called the skin effect. Um, and it's uh, simply, uh, you know, as the uh, frequencies increase, uh, the electron flows closer to the uh, the outer portion of a, a wire rather than the internal portion like it does with uh, something like direct current. For the exam, know that as the frequency of a signal passing through a coax cable is increased, the loss increases. Uh, in this photo is an N-type connector. Uh, it's commonly used uh, for UHF. Um, for the exam, you just need to know that an N-type connector is most suitable for frequencies above 400 megahertz. The type of connector that's uh, most common for uh, HF applications, and uh, for the most part uh, VHF as well, is the PL259 type. So for the exam, you need to know what is true about a PL259 
259 type coaxial or coax connector is they are commonly used for HF frequencies. Most of us uh, know uh, from life's experience that uh, rust and uh, uh, corrosion are the result of uh, water on metal. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that coax connectors exposed to the weather should be sealed against water intrusion to prevent an increase in feed line loss. It should be noted and illustrated uh, by this uh, photo that open connections uh, are actually uh, a bigger cause of uh, problems than short circuits when it comes to electronics. Uh, but for the exam, you need to know that a loose connection in an antenna or a feed line can cause erratic changes in SWR readings. Even with the, the same impedance, not all feed line is created equal. Um, a lot of this has to do with some conductors are big, just bigger than uh, uh, the other. Uh, for the exam, you need to know that the electrical difference between an RG58 and an RG8 coaxial cable is RG8 cable has less loss at a given frequency. Because at higher frequencies, uh, there's a, the, what we talked about earlier with the skin effect, the electrons actually uh, go to the outer part of the conductor. Um, air insulated type line uh, you know, has more surface for the electrons to flow. For the exam you need to know that air insulated hard line is a type of feed line that has lower loss at VHF and UHF. Well now that you're a bit more knowledgeable about antennas and uh, feed lines you're much closer to passing your exam. Uh, if you like this uh, video, please uh, hit subscribe below or leave uh, any comments that you might have. Until next time, never stop learning.